you're back. Today, I'm gonna to share with you what I learned on my adventure. If you missed last week's video where I broke down everything that I brought with me on my medieval camping trip, you can go ahead and check that up here. That's part one. But today, I'm gonna to share with you some of the things that I learned. First thing I'll say is that being out in the peace and quiet was just so nice. And now here I am back in suburbia, and there is not silence for more than 20 seconds. All right, anyway, so number one, these shoes I would not take again. They're just too heavy to be hiking around in all day. Way more knee pain than was necessary. So next time I'm bringing lighter boots. That's the first thing I learned. Number two, this trivet worked beautifully. This is from the Townsend's Reenacting Company and we didn't have any problems with getting even heating or enough heat. This thing brewed coffee. It did absolutely everything. And I attached it to my pack with this piece of cordage. And originally I was planning on taking it off before we used it because I didn't want it to burn, but we left it on. That made it so that when we were done using it and we didn't want it in the fire anymore, you could just grab the rope and pick it up very carefully without needing gloves. The only thing I would say is that if you could have the two legs be up here so that it's stable when you're trying to put it back down again. That would just be a slight improvement. All right, so number three. I was doing a little bit of an experiment to see if I could stay warm in my admittedly modern tent with only my period clothes and blankets. And it got down to about 30 or so degrees and it was raining. And the answer to that is no. I had to resort to using my modern sleeping bag. It just got too cold. The bed of leaves that I made wasn't very thick. It had just rained the day before we went camping as well, so I was just trying to keep the ground and the tent dry. I wasn't really trying to insulate myself, so maybe that would have helped. But this three-piece system where I have like a small blanket and then I have the two cloaks wasn't adequate enough to keep me warm. I did keep all of this on and through a little bit of research, I learned that modern sleeping bags work better if you're not wearing clothes because it, it, it sort of keeps the heat from being uh, insulated around you if you're wearing too many layers. So maybe it needs more experimentation. Number four, something for my fellow Lord of the Rings reenactors or people that just enjoy pipes in general. And this actually made me very sad because all the pipes that they use in the movies are made of wood. So that's why I originally got wood pipes. But wood pipes, in my opinion, travel very poorly. And that is for a number of reasons. One, I bought this pipe specifically for travel because it's a sitter pipe. You can sit it down and, it, and it's not going to fall over as long as the ground is level there. But because it's made of wood, if it's humid outside, if it's damp outside, you have to be very careful with where you put them, if you put them down anywhere at all, because they will soak up that moisture and you want them to stay dry. And if they get moist that easily, that's kind of a problem. Um, the other thing is that wood pipes actually require a fair bit of maintenance or they start to taste sour. In fact, you're supposed to let them dry out for a full week after you use them once. And that's why in the old days you had people with like lines of pipes. It's because you needed a new one for each day of the week. So in terms of utility, you would need to carry extra things in order to clean them and you wouldn't be able to use them as often as you might want to. And you have to be very careful where you put them because they might get even more moist without you even smoking them. Moist. I'm sorry. But clay pipes are actually surprisingly very good travel pipes. Now, they are so much smaller, so much more compact, easier to take with you, and they clean so much more easily too. Not only do they not need to be cleaned very often, because the clay actually absorbs the tobacco, but if you just stick them in the coals of your fire for even 10 minutes, they're clean. They're, they're good as new. I even left this little one out overnight accidentally and it got rained on and it's absolutely fine. You would never want to do that with a wood pipe. Another project that I'm going to have to do after going out on this little excursion is I'm going to have to make a brand new sax knife sheath. If you watched the video up here where I uh, talked to you about how I designed this and I had to do some fixing up on it uh, because the knife was falling out, the fix that I made it, it didn't work. And one very practical thing that I learned quite hilariously is if you're wearing a long tunic like this, this one goes down to about my knees. If you're wearing a long tunic, be very careful about how quickly you stand up because you might step on yourself and then almost fall into a fire. It's a bird. It's a bird right there. So number five, five, six. Now I understand why people always do that. It's easy to forget. 
Fire smoke and even pipe smoke does a pretty decent job of keeping mosquitoes away. So if you're packing up camp, put your fire out last. You're gonna have to be dealing with everything buzzing around you. So number seven, I think this water skin was enough to get me through about two days worth. Now I wasn't super well hydrated, but this didn't need to be refilled while I was out there. And number eight, having a scarf along that you can wrap around yourself if it's not too cold, but just to sort of use as a face mask if the fire from the wood smoke is just absolutely crazy because of the wind helps keep that out of your eyes and out of your lungs a little bit. So it's good to just have. So as I said, this has been a bit of a learning process for me when it comes to bushcraft and actual camping, I'm still learning a lot myself. So thank you adventurers for coming back today to learn a little bit about what I learned and potentially avoid some of the mistakes that I made and get inspired. I do hope we see each other again, but in the meantime, good luck on your adventures.